what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today I am super excited because I finally got my hands on the AMD version of the all new GPD Win Max 2. So on the channel we've actually taken a look at the Intel version of this device it's powered by the i7-1260P and I personally really like it it does offer some really good CPU performance but when it comes to the GPU it definitely leaves a little more to be desired. But with the WinMax 2, GPD decided to offer two models, one with Intel, one with AMD, and today we're taking a look at the Ryzen 7 6800U powered WinMax 2. So right off the bat, if I had to decide between the Intel or the Ryzen version, I would probably go with the Ryzen version every single day. We've got some really great performance here. And keep in mind, this does support USB 4, so we're going to try an eGPU with this. I've been able to do it on other laptops with these newer 6000 chips, and I think it's going to work out here also. I personally still consider this a handheld. It's definitely on the larger side, but I'm a huge fan of these bigger screen devices. But if you do end up getting either one of these, inside of the box, you're going to get your user manual. It tells you exactly what you need to know about it. They also include a 100 watt PD charger. So yeah, this does support 100 watt charging and it's got a 67 watt hour battery built in. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the performance. We're going to test out some PC games and things like that. We'll also run some benchmarks, but as you can see, we've got this really nice backlit keyboard built in. These controls here can be hidden with the little magnetic plates that do come included. And when it comes to the built in display, we've got a big, beautiful 10.1 inch IPS at 2560 by 1600. The default resolution is going to be 1920 by 1200. It's got 400 nits of brightness and an 80.2 DCI-P3 wide color gamut. I really do love this screen here. Also supports 10 points of touch and a pen if you wanted to use it that way. And these little magnetic covers can be stored right in the back of the unit. They slide right down. The built-in controls feel really nice. It's using a Vita-style D-pad, and when it comes to the analog sticks, we've got hall sensors here. These are actually made by Gillikit. And if you're not familiar with these hall sensor-based analog sticks, basically instead of using a physical connection, it uses a magnetic field. And in turn, this eliminates stick drift, and we get a more accurate analog stick. The buttons and D-pad are dome-based, so we're not using a conductive pad here, and there is a little bit of a clickiness to it. Personally, I've really gotten used to it, and I'm a huge fan of the Vita-style buttons and D-pad, so we've got that here, and they work out really, really well. When it comes to I.O., over here on the left-hand side, we've got a UHS-1 micro SD card slot and a full-size SD card slot, which actually supports UHS-2 with read speeds up to 312 megabytes per second and write speeds at 312. Over here on the right hand side we've got two full size USB 3.2 ports and moving around back we've got a 3.5mm audio jack, another 3.2 port, full size HDMI, USB 3.2 and USB 4.0 and in theory we should be able to connect a Thunderbolt GPU dock to this and we're going to test it by the end of the video. And taking a look at the bottom, we've got two extra programmable buttons, and you might notice we've got two hatches here. One is going to be for your SIM card, because this does support 4G LTE, and the other one is for that extra 2230 M.2 that you can add down the road to add more storage. And by the way, yes, the triggers are analog on the GPD WinMax 2. And when it comes to the specs of the AMD version, we've got the Ryzen 7 6800U. This is based on Zen 3 Plus, and it does offer some really great single and multi-core performance. We've got 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 2.7, and a boost up to 4.7 GHz. And since we're working with the 6000 series mobile chip, we get new integrated graphics. This is now known as the Radeon 680M. It's based on RDNA 2, and we've got a max clock up to 2200 MHz. GPD is offering a couple different storage and RAM configurations with this unit. I've got the 16 gigabyte version, but you can also opt for 32 gigabytes of RAM, and they're both using LPDDR5 running at 6400 megahertz. This unit here has a one terabyte NVMe SSD, but you can opt for the two terabyte model. Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 4.2, a 67 watt hour battery that will charge at up to 100 watts with the included charger, and this is running Windows 11 right out of the box. I wanted to jump right into a little bit of gameplay and show you how this thing performs and right now I've actually got the TDP on this APU set to 15 watts so we're running at about what the Steam Deck runs at and we're at 720p medium settings getting well over 60 FPS. This actually averaged 76 FPS set up like this but there's more that we can pull out of this. 
We've got a big, beautiful screen, and the screen is a bit overkill, but at 1920 by 1200, and the TDP set at 28 watts, we can run this game over 60 FPS. Still a little more we can get out of this because we're only at 28 watts. We can go up to around 35 watts on this APU, but remember, going up this high, your battery life will suffer. But either way you look at it, for integrated graphics, this is some absolutely amazing performance. Even at 15 watts, running at an average of over 70 FPS on this thing, medium settings is really good. I also wanted to show off a couple benchmarks at different TDPs. So first up, we've got Geekbench 5. At 15 watts, we get a single core of 1319, multi, 6001, and all the way up to 35 watts with a single core of 1492 and a multi of 8096. So the scaling here on that TDP definitely helps out with the multi-core side of things, and it really helps out with the GPU. Here's Night Raid at all three of those wattages. We've got 15, 28, 35, and at 15, we got a total score of 17,710, 28 watts, 23, 333, and at 35 watts, 24,887. Moving over to some more PC games, we've got MK11 at high settings, 1920 by 1200. I've had really good luck with this game on Ryzen APUs. It's actually really well optimized, but you know, seeing it running at high on a handheld like this is pretty awesome. Halo Infinite is one of those games we do have to scale down on these APUs, and right now we're actually set at 1920 by 1200, but we're scaled down to 720 from the settings in the game, and we've got a low medium mix. It does run over 60, and this is perfectly playable. You know I had to throw a little bit of GTA 5 in here. 1920 by 1200, high settings. We can get over 80 FPS with this game, and with all of these that I'm testing here, I would highly recommend just turning V-Sync on, especially if you're on battery. Limiting that frame rate will help out with battery life. And of course, since the new Spider-Man Remastered is out for PC, I figured we'd go ahead and test it here. Now remember, this is actually the first day this launched on PC, so more optimizations are on the way. We're at low, 1280 by 800, 28 watts, and it's so close to running at a constant 60. And in fact, we can get over 60 if we turn FSR to Ultra Performance, but it definitely blurs everything out, and I really don't like playing it like that. But in the future, you will see me testing more of this game on different handhelds. So one thing I've been really excited about is USB 4 on the WinMax 2. We're going to go ahead and plug in this Thunderbolt eGPU dock. It's an RTX 2080 Ti. So we're connected with the Thunderbolt 3 eGPU dock over USB 4. And all I really had to do was download the latest NVIDIA drivers but it's working pretty well, and now I basically have a high-end gaming desktop. So real quick, here's the 6800U. We've still got access to those Radeon 680M integrated graphics, but for gaming, while it's in docked mode like this, we can use the RTX 2080 Ti. And obviously, having a dedicated graphics card is going to up that GPU performance tremendously. We were working with those Radeon 680M graphics, and with Forza Horizon 5, I'm now able to run this at 1440p Ultra. But uh, I'll tell you what, I've actually had much better success with something like an RTX 3060 connected over this Thunderbolt dock. So if you're interested in seeing a video like that, or even with a lower end or a higher end card, just let me know in the comments below. But I also wanted to test out God of War. And with this, I'm at 1080p Ultra. I was actually expecting to get more out of this RTX 2080. Now I completely understand that we're kind of limited by the bandwidth of that USB 4 connection. But I thought this card would do a little better over Thunderbolt. And like I mentioned, I've had much better luck with something like a 3060 or even a 3080. So 
So yeah, definitely loving the 6800U version of this. And like I mentioned, this is the one that I would have chose if I had the choice between the Intel version and the Ryzen version. So if you're interested in picking one up, I would highly suggest going with the AMD version. And if you're interested in seeing more between the Intel and the AMD version, there's an awesome YouTuber who goes by the name The Fox. I'll leave a link to his YouTube channel in the description. He's already done a lot with the 6800U version, showing off benchmarks and everything like that. Definitely give his channel a watch because he's got a lot of great information over there. I do have a couple more videos planned with this version here. We're going to do a full emulation showcase. That'll be coming up real soon, so keep an eye on the channel. I also want to do some more eGPU testing over USB 4. So if you want to see a video like that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on so you know when I post the next one. And I'd also like to know your thoughts on this unit. Were you one of those people who were kind of on the fence between the Intel and the AMD version? You know, which one are you getting? Have you pre-ordered it? Are you not interested at all, waiting for something a bit more powerful? Let me know your thoughts down below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.